Well, it looks like we are streaming on Facebook live here again for Quarantine Kitchen Happy Hour, folks. Um, I'm here a little bit early. I'm just kind of tightening up a few little nuts and bolts around here before we really get uh, going. I was just going to select a wine for later. Uh, I, I need a little water for a little bit to start. But uh, it is Quarantine Kitchen Happy Hour with an emphasis on the happy. And so, hmm, I think that, I think not. Move through this. Ooh, folk machine. I'll give a little shot of that. Shout out there, okay? This is a pretty tasty one we've been uh, getting lately from uh, my good friend Amy Gravish's wine shop in Dixon. The Pip, okay? Folk machine, white, white, it's called, okay? And uh, just very light and refreshing, not very acidic. Uh, we've been drinking it around the house during quarantine lately. And uh, yeah, you should check it out again. Pip Wine Shop, longtime friend of the show. So I think I'll be getting into that in a little bit. But for now, just a little drink of water. I want to make sure I got my uh, comments going here. And boom, 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 looks like we are live now. And uh, let's see, no comments yet, but it's still early. We uh, aren't even really, really there yet. It's not four o'clock. I always start my classes on time. I'm one of those guys. So cheers, everyone. Oh boy, very, very thirsty. Quarantine kitchen happy hour. What are we doing today? I may as well get right into it. Uh, I don't see anybody here, but I'm going to start talking about it anyway. Um, I'm going to be working with chowder today. I'm trying to go backwards in time. I talked about it a little bit in my last class. I'm teaching kind of these, these catch-up games that I didn't teach in the beginning of all of this, this mayhem that we are living through now. And so um, I'm, I'm kind of going back in time and teaching some of the, uh, uh, what I would normally teach right out of the gate, which is some soup techniques, because in those soup techniques, there are a ton of techniques that you would see later on in, in a culinary program, perhaps, right? Um, as it turns out, you have seen a lot of these techniques before. So a lot of this uh, uh, chowder that we're making today is going to look very, very familiar to you, okay? Um, when I'm talking about techniques, I'm talking about things like um, uh, 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 the first thing we're going to do is render, okay? I'm going to scald some milk. I am going to do some knife cuts, right? We're going to dice up an onion and things like that. Amy Breedlove, good to see you out there. Alt Art, good to see you as well. And uh, two other people, good to see everybody. Thanks for joining, right? Um, so back to it. We're talking about chowder, okay? Uh, we do rendering. We do um, uh, uh, some knife skills in there, right? Um, we are going to do a little bit of sweating. I talked about sweating and the importance of sweating last week when we were, uh, uh, you know, talking about building flavors in a pot, right? When I sweat these vegetables out, that's when I'm going to be laying down some base flavors into my chowder today, okay? So um, that's going to be kind of a, a reinforcement of what we saw last week. Um, let's see, what other things do we do in chowders? Um, we make a roux. We do a little bit of roux work in here, right? And so uh, I'm going to kind of cook out some, some bacon to get a little bit of fat. I'm going to add some flour in there, and then I'm going to cook that out a little bit. And this is what we call roux, and this is going to be the thickener for our chowder, right? By the way, everybody loves a thick, thick clam chowder. I am not one of those people. I don't want to be able to stand my spoon up in a chowder. It's so not me. I believe soups should be uh, uh, liquids in some form, size, or shape, right? And so uh, uh, you're going to see my, my chowder tend to flow. You're not going to be able to stand a spoon or anything up in my chowder. Okay, uh, let's see. Going back to the techniques within chowder, okay? We, we were just talking about sweating um, and roux work, okay? Uh, now we're incorporating a liquid into the roux and, and now we're talking about that sauce work and thickening liquids. When I teach my sauce class, it's really just a class on, hey, this is how you get those liquids thick, right? And if you know how to make a sauce, like a, a French sauce, like a velouté or a bechamel or something like that, you know how to make chowder. In fact, if you're familiar with bechamel, it's a milk-based sauce thickened with this flour fat liquid uh, uh, mixture that we call roux. Um, and there's all, there's a bechamel that's milk and roux. And there's a velouté, which is a white stock in a roux. And when you look at chowder, um, chowder, if you're talking about a New England chowder, a white chowder, it tends to be a combination of both. If you're doing a clam chowder, it's like milk and clam juice, right? Uh, if you're doing a vegetable chowder, like I am today, I'm gonna do a potato and corn chowder and just basically what I have around the kitchen chowder, okay? Um, uh, in that case, you're just doing milk and a white stock. It's kind of a combination of those two French sauces, if you will, right? But ultimately, ultimately the big lesson here is, or the big reinforcement here is thickening a liquid using using a starch, right? And so those are the, another technique. That's another technique that we're gonna be talking about today. 
Okay. Um, once we get that liquid thickened, we're going to be talking about simmering it out. We've got to simmer that out to uh, kind of get some of the starchy flavors out of it. So that's another thing that we're going to be talking about. Simmering is a technique unto itself. And then finally, we're going to be adding some finishes to it, and, and that'll be our chowder. Okay. Most of those finishes are, uh, uh, as it as it sounds, right? They're coming at the finish of a dish, right? Um, uh, and so uh, we'll be talking about that, though. There is a conversation to be had there. Uh, for now, there are a few things that we want to get going on the fire in the beginning. Beginning, right? I'm always looking at those things that need to get on the stove first. Okay. Um, but here's here's a here's a bad example. Okay. Chopped parsley. Parsley is about the last thing. It's one of those finishes I was just talking about. And if I go into a kitchen and the first thing I do is start chopping parsley when I really need to get some bacon rendering and get some milk kind of warming up. And I even want to toast a little fennel seed. I'm gonna work a little fennel seed into my chowder today. Okay. So um if if I'm chopping parsley before getting things on the fire. I'm doing it wrong, okay? And so that's what I'm gonna do right now, those three things. I want to get some milk on the fire, okay? Um, and again, this isn't about a recipe. This is really about all of those techniques I just talked about, okay? They all come together into one. I'm using about a quart and a half, uh, about a quart of milk here probably, okay? I'm making about a half gallon of soup because I wanna eat this soup for a couple of days this week. Several days, a couple of days. So um, I'm just throwing that milk on just because it's easy and I'm just going to get it warm and, and bring it up to what we call the scald, right? And what it does is it like you get this little coating of protein on the surface of it. You see the skin form and I like to lift that skin out of there and I get rid of that. And when I make my sauce, I'm not going to get a bunch of little white little specks in my sauce. It's these little proteins that, that coagulate at this very low temperature. I'm going to get rid of those, okay? And so uh, I'm going to kind of bring that up. Another thing I want to do is start toasting some spice, okay? I've got a little fennel seed. I want to blend in. I love fennel and, and, and chowders and things like that. So I'm just going to get a little pan. And I'm going to start warming that up. Okay. So right now I got milk on one fire, super, super low. And I'm going to get a flame underneath this fella, this little teeny fella. And I'm going to work in some fennel seeds to this guy. And when I edit this, I will, uh, I will kick in ingredients and not really amount so much, but you guys grab any chowder recipe out there and you'll see most of 90% of this stuff going down. Okay. So I'm going to get a little fennel seed in there. And that's a little less than a tablespoon probably. And I'm just going to lightly toast that. Okay. I want that flame under there to probably be about five out of 10. When I'm toasting, and I've talked about this before, when I'm toasting, it's, it's a gentle thing. I'm implying gentle heat. It's not like searing. When I say the word sear, I'm implying a very high heat, right? Sear is like 10, you know, on 10, right? So toasting, more like five out of 10. And I've done this in other, other shows. This is reinforcement for, for anybody that's been kind of watching this stuff, okay? Let's see. I'm seeing Melissa out there and Kathy, awesome. Good for showing up. Thanks for showing up. Joel's out there, Macy. Thanks for showing up. Oh, we got lots of people. Miss Xanthi out there. I uh, uh, saw a little video of you speaking Italian earlier. Very nice. Showing off your food. Let's see. Louie, Susanna. I think most of you guys are in that industry cooking group. Okay. I hope you guys are enjoying that stuff. Uh, I, I'm hoping to create that as kind of a learning venue. You know, we can all kind of help out. Uh, all of these years as a culinary teacher, every plate I've seen from a student, I have to find something good to talk about, right? You know, I am always looking for one thing. So I encourage you guys to do that as well. If you see people posting in our, our little industry group out there, uh, um, hey, Lend some encouragement. Talk about a cool variation you've done on the same technique, right? I want it to be kind of a learning platform, ultimately, not just a place to, you know, show off Instagram plates and stuff, right? So I'm just kind of toasting these, uh, this fennel. I'm going to kick that off to another burner because there's a third thing I want to really get going here. So those are just going to go really, really slow. I've turned it down to about three out of 10, quite frankly, because that pan's hot now and it's doing good. Those uh, spices are starting to toast up. My milk's eh, not getting very warm. I think I'll turn it up a little bit more. And next, I'm, I've grabbed a pot to make my chowder in ultimately. And what I want to do now is the start of my chowder. The start of my chowder is going to be the technique of rendering, okay? Now, I have got a beautiful, beautiful piece of slab bacon here that, uh, you know, I was a, you know, longtime friend of the show, V. Miller, 
shop, I won't lie. You know, I talk about them quite a lot. Uh, I was in there and um, they were just pulling bacon out of the smoker and that is what I wanted. I wanted some slabs. I'd love to be able to cut my own bacon. I can cut these thick lardons or little cubes or whatever I want with it, right? This bacon still has the skin on it. So I'm gonna remove that and use that skin for other purposes. That pork, that hog skin is very, very gelatinous. And uh, I, I'll probably throw it in a stock or something like that. And it'll uh, add a lot of, lot of gelatin to a stock. Okay, so uh, let me just go ahead and shear that fat off of my beautiful slab of bacon. I'm having camera issues, sorry everybody. There we go, there we go now. And I left my bacon in the refrigerator to the last minute. So it's very, very cold and easy to work with. You don't wanna leave your bacon out where it's just gonna be sloppy and flopping all around. You want your bacon ice cold when you're working on it, cutting on it. That guy, I am actually gonna kind of fold it in half and I'm gonna cut it up a little bit more. And like I said, I'm just gonna work that into maybe a stock or something. Cut it up, I get a little more surface area out of it, a little more flavor out of there. And that's gonna go in my little stock bowl here. I've been saving parsley stems and things like that this afternoon. And now you can see that bacon comes from the belly. This is basically a piece of pork belly, right? And you can see the slices of bacon there. And I'm just gonna slice those across as thick as I'd like. I want a little bit of body to these because as they cook down, they're gonna get smaller and smaller. So gosh, I don't know what that is. Three eighths of an inch, horrible at measuring. I'm gonna cut a goodly amount. Now you will notice that this bacon is very, very fatty. And I actually asked them for the fatty pieces because I use bacon so much as a jump start for so many of my recipes. I have other bacon for breakfast, cooking that up, but this slab that I keep around, this is for cooking, okay? And so uh, I think I pulled off about four and let's do another slab on there. We're gonna get that great taste of bacon. And this is gonna help us lay down the flavor of our dish. So let me kind of set that bacon aside. And what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna do a cut that we call a lardon, okay? I'm gonna cut straight across the slices. And I've done this before in these quarantine classes. I'm cutting straight across, a little bit of body to them. And I'm just gonna have nice, thick, meaty pieces of lardon in my soup later. And by the way, these aren't gonna cook in my chowder. I'm just gonna render the fat out and then I'm going to garnish with the crispy lardon pieces of bacon on the top, okay? So what I've got now is I've got a fairly low pan over here. There's, I've been running the heat under here about two out of 10. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop my bacon in. You can hear the tiniest little sizzle. I am so not looking for color here. We want white chowder, right? It's is a new, new England style chowder. It's the milky kind of chowder, right? And so I'm not looking for color here. Uh, and you're going to see me using a little bit of water, okay? I got a little water in there. Little splashes of water con to control the color in the pan. And so Magalay is out there. Ms. Roberta's there. Oh, Ms. Roberta. Cheers to you, young lady. Got to take a drink. Looks like people are talking out there on the side, Ms. Debbie and Mr. Uh, Jeremy. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy Katz out there. Had a uh, excellent, if you haven't seen it, uh, Mr. Jeremy Katz is out here watching uh, a little earlier and we had an excellent little interview the other day about his little home business he's running out of his, uh, his, his home kitchen here in Sacramento and it was a pretty darn cool interview. And so uh, if you haven't seen that, please check that out. And yes, cheers to you, Ms. Roberta, I just saw that. Cheers to you, young lady. Mm. We're getting hungry already. Look at that bacon, okay? So the bacon is sitting in there. I put a tiny little splash of water in there and I am going to advance the heat on this just a little bit. I'm probably on about four out of 10. And I am going to get the most important tool of the day, okay? It's gonna be my trusty wooden spoon here. It's not my regular one, but that's all right. And this is gonna take some time to, uh, to render out. So we get that going and fat is gonna be uh, start drawing out. I'm actually gonna add a tiny bit more water. And eventually that water is going to evaporate away, okay? Uh, when it does, the, the fat starts rendering out. If I start to notice a little bit of color in there, that brown stick into the pan and things, I'm gonna do tiny splashes of water. I've talked about this a lot in my classes, okay? Tiny little splashes of water, and we will clean up any of that browning that's going on. We want a white chowder, not like a brown tan, 
ivory color, whatever you want, and we'll call it. Okay. Now, so that's cruising along. Not very hot. I'm really nervous about browning. Okay. I've got my fennel seeds over here, and I just kind of pull them off the heat, and they're just kind of cruising along. And I just give them a little toss. I, I think I'm just going to kind of have that pan on the heat, if you can see that. I got the pan itself on the heat over here, and the seeds are off the heat over in the corner. So I'm just heating the pan, and the residual heat is going to take care of those uh, seeds in the side, okay? Like I said, the toasting spices, it's a low and slow kind of a thing. Kind of toss them around and I'm going to get a nice even color on them and it's going to be beautiful. Okay. My milk over here is just kind of cruising along. It's not doing too much. I'm going to give it a little stir. I'm very nervous about this milk boiling over. Caution everyone. Caution. If you are heating milk, it boils over very easily. If you've ever done it, you know what I'm talking about. So we really want to keep an eye on there. Ms. Vanessa, thanks for joining. Mr. Dick, let's see. Yeah, anybody got any questions, shout them out. I got my uh, my question machine working nowadays. Mr. Isaac, I see you there. Ex-student, another ex-student, Mr. Kirk is on. Awesome, awesome. Good stuff. This ought to look fairly familiar to some of you guys. Shouter day 101, I'm gonna stir my bacon around. Let me get it to a place you can see kind of more than one pot at once. There we go. Stir my bacon around and let's kind of bring up that heat a tiny bit. Maybe I'm on about six out of 10 now and I'm not seeing much fat coming out of here. What I think I will do, I'm gonna need extra fat anyway. I'm gonna add a little bit of a fat in the beginning also to help kind of keep me from getting color. Now this is just, a, uh, this is kind of duck and, and bacon fat right here that I use around the kitchen. Uh, uh, so it, it's got bacon fat in it, it's duck, there's some chicken fat in it. And now that's gonna kind of help start the party a little bit too. Now you can use any little splash of oil, whatever you have around, olive oil or something. And I'm feeling a little bit better about things. It's got a little bit of a, a give now, okay? So what we're doing, we are rendering out the um, fat. I'm gonna turn off my spices. Rendering the fat out of this bacon, I'm going to remove it from the pan, and then I'm going to use that fat to cook the vegetables for my chowder. And so while this is going, I may as well be cutting vegetables for that chowder. And so let's kind of bring them over here. Some of the vegetables I need now, but some of them I don't. Let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. I've got my classic mirepoix here, the carrot, celery, and onion, and that's what I'm going to start my base flavors in, okay? That's kind of, you know, clam chowder 101. And then I've got some regular potatoes, and then I had I didn't have enough regular potatoes, so I'm gonna bust open about half of a sweet potato and work that in as well, right? I'm gonna get some nice color, different kind of vitamin profile going on, and nutrient profile in there. Um, it's gonna be a beautiful thing, uh, 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 and and it's absolutely appropriate. It's just another form of potato, right, for my chowder. Now. <clears throat> I don't need these potatoes right away. I need the other vegetables first, those root vegetables. And so that's what I'm gonna work on. Uh, I'm gonna set the potatoes aside. Once I get the chowder kind of composed, all the liquid together, that's when I'm gonna work those potatoes in and they're just gonna simmer in that sauce, okay? Now I'm starting to get the tiniest little bit of browning in my uh, uh, pan right in this corner here, okay? And so that's when I'm gonna bring in that water and kind of melt that, deglaze it a little bit, and then I won't have that brown color at the end. So I just did a tiny splash, sorry, let me get you over there. Tiny splash, I'm gonna get my spoon in there, clean it up. Yes, yes. Awesome. Nana, good to see you out there, girl. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Greg is out there as well. Vanessa, thank you. It's looking beautiful. I just kind of melted the brown stuff. It's all nice and clean in there, and we don't have to worry about brown chowder. That's what it's going to be. I'm going to start. I'm going to turn this down a little bit, okay? And 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 that will allow me to kind of keep cutting vegetables here, okay? So what I will do is I am going to start out. Sorry, guys. Got you all off track here. I'm going to start out with a little onion first, and then I'm going to go celery, and then I'm going to go carrot. This carrot actually doesn't take very long to cook. Uh, first of all, I've got an onion. It's got a little funkiness on it. We're going to kind of clean that up first, okay? Let me 
get you all lined up there. There it is. And yeah, I think it's focused. First thing I'm going to do is cut off the North Pole, and then I'm going to cut off the South Pole, which I always call the root end there. I'm going to get rid of those. One I'm going to save. It's all nice and clean. And the other is funky, and uh, I don't think I even want that. Um, raw, uh, funky onion just doesn't taste very good. I'm going to cut that in half, and most of this onion is all A-OK. -okay. I'm going to get rid of the stuff that's funky. I think what I can do is just kind of shave that part off right there, maybe that part. And the rest of that is money. I'm not going to throw that away. There you go. Yeah. And we're going to look at the other half of this guy. My bacon's still doing fine over here. It's not getting out of control. Back to my onion. A little bit of cleanup there. I think I'm just going to throw that piece in my stock pot. Yeah, this is all funky. That browning tastes funky. I'm not going to use that for stock. And I think I have got most of it. And I think I want to rinse all this funk off. Rinse the funk off. Miss Joni is out there, young lady. Hope it's appropriate to say, uh, uh, Miss Joni, uh, Miss Joni T out there. I don't like to use full names on here, but Miss Joni T, she uh, is the project manager over there at Oak Park Farmers Market, and she's going to be blessing me with her presence uh, this Thursday on one of my between the st two stoves interviews. Very excited about that. I've been trying to get this young lady on for quite some time now. I want her to talk about uh, how cool Oak Park farmer's market is. I just love that little market. Okay. And so we're going to be talking to her on Thursday. I'm going back to this bacon. It's looking like it's picking up a tiny bit of color over there. I think we can see that. I'm going to do another splash. And it might splash me a little bit. It's hot. And I'm going to clean it up with my wooden spoon. And I think I'll do another splash. And I'm gonna melt all of that goodness. And any browning that was going on in there, here I'm almost there. Any browning that was kind of stuck to the pan just melted in the liquid. And now it's gonna kind of stick to that bacon because the bacon's kind of sticky itself, right? So I just got the browning off of the pan and now it's coming back onto the bacon. We're keeping the bottom of the pan nice and clean. That's the object with this, that's the trick with chowda. Chowda, say it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so back to my onion, everybody. This will go real quick. I've, I've done this uh, very, very many times, very several times in front of you guys. So I'm just going to do this really quickly, okay? I think you've all seen a Cicele onion before. I went across with two horizontal cuts. I'm going to turn the face towards me, and then I'm going to go across the top. And I'm making bite-sized little pieces that will fit on a spoon, right? You guys all know what chowder bits look like. In a regular old clam chowder. That's a, what we would call about a small dice in culinary school right there. Okay, and I'm pushing that off. I don't want to throw that onion in on top of my bacon. Things got a little fuzzy there for a second. Take a look at that bacon. It's cruising along nicely. Let me give it another little stir. There's a tiny bit of water, a right, uh, little bit of brown right there. You guys see what I'm doing? Just kind of cleaning up the area. Let's do another little good splash here. I'm going to give it a shake. Now, if you're worried about bacon getting soggy, every time the water cooks out of this thing, that bacon just starts frying again, and it just gets crispier and crispier. Don't you worry. It's going to be nice and crispy at the end. Actually, I like to get it just this side of crispy. I don't like it completely crispy when I'm using it in a, in a recipe. Okay, so let me cut the rest of this onion. This guy's gonna be a little funky. He's slippery. I think he's several onions. Let me get rid of that. Ah, well, I'm gonna Cecile this part. There it is again. You guys can't see that. Let me try that again. I just went across sideways twice. Now over the top. Across the face, chop it up. It's a rough chop. I think I'm just gonna, just in the interest of moving along, I'm gonna kick those into my stock pot. I've got a big old pile of onion over here. I've got plenty. A few extra little pieces. And I'm pushing those guys off to the side for now. Taking another look at the bacon, taking my time with the bacon, cooking with love here, okay? I don't wanna rock and roll this bacon. I'm just gonna 
burning, right? Taking my time, drinking my wine. I'm gonna ease that flame up just by an inch, okay? By one notch, and it's a little brown. Cleaning it up. Whoa, look at that cloud. Beautiful. Clean it up. Boop, boop. There are so many applications where you're doing this deglaze and wooden spoon scraping. So many things. This bacon is getting very close. It's almost time to put onion in. Thanks for showing, uh, Rachel. Good to see you. Amy is out there. Robert, I'm going to take another sip here, folks. The kitchen's getting a little warm, but I'm feeling good. Thanks for joining me for another quarantine kitchen happy hour, guys. Looks like we got a big old crew out there today. There's all kinds of people showing up and saying things. The bacon is looking good. Big old fat meaty pieces. Getting ready to go with my uh, onion here. Celery's going to be the next thing I cut up, but I'm thirsty. Let's take a little break here. I'm on break, chef. Oh, delicious. Delicious. All right. Um, the bacon's not quite there, so I'm just going to cut celery while we have time. I bet I can probably finish this celery in the time it takes me to get this bacon done. Super close. Actually, this bacon's about there. I just turned the flame off. And it's just going to sit there for a minute. I'm going to do this uh, celery really quick. Um, I have done celery many times in these classes. My recommendation for celery, after I kind of clean off the funky stuff, do a little surgery in there, get rid of that. The rest of this is all washed and clean and ready to go. I'm going to cut it into lengths that are manageable for me. So I cut it in about thirds, and that is easily the length of my knife blade. So when I go ahead and start cutting into them, my knife blade can make straight cuts across the top. I'm not trying to do a whole length of celery. Get it? This is how you get straight cuts on your celery. About four pieces. And things like onion and celery, this stuff's almost going to cook down to nothing in there, I'll tell you. My bacon's doing fine. It's off and it's just kind of, the color of it is just evening out right now. It's coming along beautifully. I don't have a ton of color on the bottom of the pan. And when the onions go in, there's a lot of moisture in the onions and celery. And that is going to kind of melt a little, any little brown bits that are still stuck to the bottom. My milk just came to the scald. You see the tiny bubbles on the surface there? I don't know how well you can see them, but I certainly do. Uh, uh, and it's a tiny bit of surface agitation. I'm turning the milk off, and it's going to develop a little skin there, which I will remove. If you don't do that step, you will wind up with tiny little white specks in your finished uh, soup, okay? And so that's just a nice little extra, extra thing. It's very nice, okay? Let me finish up the celery, and then I will pull out the bacon, and you will see some gorgeous looking bacon lardon, if I may say myself, okay? I'm going to cut those a little bit longer, and I'm trying to do too many at once, right? That's how you get quality cuts. I'm just mangling these, right? Let me just do a few at a time. Kind of simmer down there, chef. Okay. That's better. I've got a, a little bit more of an even size that matches those onions I just did. We need these to match. The sizes to match so things cook evenly and so they make sense in the dish. Okay. Mr. Bo's out there. Good to see you, brother. Ms. Amanda, Halfen, Roberto in the house. All right. Okay, so I got a couple of veggies cut for this. You know, I, I don't really cut everything up before I start cooking like you see on food TV, right? Um, when I go into a shift, it's like, hey, I get the dish started. It's starting to cook while I'm cutting this other stuff. If I cut everything up, then I would have been rendering the bacon and just standing here watching it, right? Um, so get the first item cooking in the pan while you're working on the next item, feed it into the pot, feed the kitty, feed the kitty, just keep on rolling, okay? Now, I'm gonna pull out the bacon and lay it in a little dish. Little paper towel underneath there, why not? And then pull it on out. I'm gonna tilt the pan and all the bacon's gonna go to one side. And then I tilt the other direction and all the fat will go to that side. And then I lift the bacon out. Got to keep them separated. Woo-hoo, woo-hoo, all right? So all that beautiful fat is over on the other side. 
there is a tiny bit of browning up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna do a deglaze with water. I'm gonna use the natural water in these veggies. I'm gonna to toss them in. They're gonna release steam and that is gonna help kind of clean up that browning in there. So here we go. I'm gonna kick, oh, I got the flame on like one right now. Let's just get these veggies in here. Barely even a little sizzle. I'm not looking for color guys. This is a white New England kind of chowder. And by the way, you know, if you, uh, you know, I'm talking to my industry folk out there, my people that have ever worked in restaurants. I mean, you ever get a job in a kitchen? Um, hey, it's Friday. You better know how to make a clam chowder, right? We're not doing a clam chowder today, but you need to know these steps. If you got to cook bacon into it, um, uh, that that is kind of one of the definitions of chowder, I should say. Most chowders do start out with a pork product to start, you know, uh, sweating things off in it, which is what we're doing now. So um, uh, uh, this progression, it's, it's important for uh, beginning cook to know this.